Joining me now for more on the release of the three Americans and the path forward to peace on the Korean Peninsula is Joseph Yun, CNN's global affairs analyst and former top U.S. diplomat for North Korea policy. He joins us now live. Sir, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. It was an incredible moment to witness the homecoming of those three American citizens. But why did North Korea hand them over? What was the incentive for Pyongyang to free these men? Well, thank you, Christy. Of course, this is all related to upcoming summit, which will most likely take place uh, over the next uh, three to four weeks. Uh, and, and it looks like uh, certainly Singapore might be the venue. Uh, this has to do with setting up. You really want to remove uh, some of these issues that have been there for a long time. As you know, these three Americans have been uh, detained in North Korea for some time. The, uh, the one that has been detained the longest is, of course, Kim dong Chol. He's been there, I would say, now uh, starting from uh, 2015. So it's been a while. He's been in a labor camp. It was great to see all three of them looking mm. apparently quite healthy as they arrived in Andrews Airport. Now, the North Koreans, they have already achieved a number of things. They got two meetings with the U.S. Secretary of State. They have the upcoming meeting with the U.S. President. So what incentives are left for North Korea to agree to complete denuclearization? Well, you know, complete denuclearization is a long-term goal. I would see it as a long-term goal. And in fact, I would be a little bit concerned that expectations on denuclearization could be quite different in Pyongyang and in Washington. In Washington, we want to see immediate denuclearization. I really doubt this is going to happen. Rather, what the North Koreans want is kind of action for action, which will take time. And, uh, and, and in the meantime, they do a little bit of action and U.S. gives them benefit as well as the international community. So the meeting that will take place in four weeks is really about narrowing that gap. Uh, but uh, I hope it's a good meeting. Uh, my, my hope is that as the meeting proceeds and there are results, diplomatic process continues. Mm. I mean, as you can see, compared to where we were in November or December last year, really tensions have been reduced there is no longer talk of a bloody nose or anything like that so i think just the idea just the proposal and just the initial engagement alone has set the scene so i think we can look forward to some concrete results from the meeting you know it has been incredible the difference between a few months ago last year and now but ahead it's going to be a tricky path towards peace and you've spoken about the timing of achieving denuclearization and achieving a peace treaty you said that it would be a mistake to have a peace treaty come first mm -hmm. why is that well having a peace treaty come first of course peace treaty will involve security guarantees perhaps even uh, 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 placing U.S. troops or remaining U.S. troops staying in on the Korean Peninsula, as well as diplomatic normalization that goes with it. So if you do peace treaty first, it means you are accepting North Korea as a nuclear weapon state. And that is not acceptable to South Koreans, to Japanese, and many countries in the region and beyond. So I do believe we have to have denuclearization first and then a peace treaty. And a question about the sincerity of Kim Jong-un. And, and I ask because on the tarmac at Andrews, President Trump said this about the North Korean leader. He said, quote, I really think he wants to do something and bring that country into the real world. I really believe that, unquote. Do you agree with that? We don't know. Quite honestly, we don't know the real motives of North Korean uh, leader, but it is a hypothesis worth testing to test whether he wants to become part of international community. I certainly think we need to push it far along to see whether he means anything. Again, I would caution it's going to take time. It took what, you know, starting from 1994, 25 years to get here in terms of 
denuclearization negotiations itself. So it's going to take long. So, I mean, as a diplomat, we want to see a process. We want to see some movement on the process. But let's not set too high a bar. It's incremental process at the end of the day. Joseph Yuan, Absolutely. thank you so much for joining us. Take care. Thank you very much.